Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at the Venus Yacht from the Steam Workshop. This one's been created by Installation 04, and it's a beautiful combination of a large ship on the exterior with a small ship inside. And this allows a creator just to create a lot more detail when they're building a craft, especially when working with an interior where the large blocks really do limit you. Now what attracted me to this design in the first place is this lovely glass viewing area that wraps itself around the ship, allows you to see inside at the various cockpits, the bridge area, as well as some of the lower luxury sections like the bedroom down there below. But let's work our way along the hull. So we've also got this really nice diamond shape going on in the main focus of the hull. You can see the front V there. You can see the rear V in that section, as well as the glass paneling. That's been stacked with the armor blocks on top to create a little bit of shadow, a bit of contrast between the different areas. And then we've got that really nice looking intake on the top there, where some LCD screens have been used just to create a little bit more detail. As we wrap around the side, you can see we've got the side view window that accesses into one of the med bay areas. And we also have the thrust pack. That's a combination of iron thrusters and hydrogen thrusters. And this ship is suitable to land on planets. But what really excites me about these little nacelle engine pods is their X configuration. But also this little section here. Just look how it's been detailed. These are actually internal sort of corridors that have been repurposed to act as an alternative look for the thrusters. I think it looks fantastic. You can see there from each of them cells just really nicely detailed. So as we took our way around the back of the cell, we enter into the rear of the ship where we've got this really nice blue thrust pack or it's some sort of exhaust gas venting. It could be whatever you do, I'm not too sure, but you can see in the center here we have another six hydrogen thrusters. The only thing that's interesting about this is if these thrusters on these nacelle engines are not wired up correctly, they could have an adverse effect on the actual ship itself. Anyway, let's pop inside. So on the externals, you can't really see an access port and I think this is pretty cool. So tucked in down here below, we actually have a little access bay here. So I'm gonna actually pop my character on the inside and I'll show you how it works. You've got a little welcome sign, like so. You can see the holographics going through the floor and you just reverse the elevator like so, pop the door open, and then the elevator lowers you in and out of the ship. Great for planetary landings. And of course, you've got the button on the side here, so if you do decide to go back up, you just raise yourself into the ship once again. Very nice idea, I really do like that. And then let's seal it back up with the airlock there. So as we enter through the welcome sign, we've got the opposite airlock on that side, and then we enter into the ship and I'll turn my lights off and you'll just get a feeling for the atmospheric vibe of the ship. It is hard to create an interior in Space Engineers, especially with the larger blocks. So by taking it down to this smaller block level, you can create a far more detailed interior. So there you go, you've got the logo, you've got the natural element company. We've got the nice floating holographic display that can also probably be switched out for various mission briefings and whatnot. You've got the glass area above. You can just see the rings of detail. It's going into, if Space Engineers had the same level of detail as Star Citizen, this is kind of getting there. So as we enter into the med bay room, we've got quite a few interesting things. We've got the med bay that's been lowered down onto the actual main large ship block there. We've got these interesting little connector devices wrapping around it to create some more detail. And over this side, we've got ourselves some sort of cat scanning machine. You can only imagine that the character, of course, would get himself inside there, scanned over. They have a little bit of a readout on display. Perfect for a role play element, this ship as well. So if we hit that button as well, we can also turn the medic room lights off. We've got the medic room lights on both sides as well there. So let's head over to the other side. So as we enter into this area, we have a little bit of a sofa, a bit of a briefing, eating, dining area, you could say. But with, while you're doing all this, you've got this great view because of the way the glass has been positioned around the ship. And it also looks pretty seamless. You, see, you can't actually see the edge too much between the small ship and the large ship if you're just walking around normally on the actual craft itself. A cool little sofa there designed as well. So let's head up and into this area. So in this section, we actually have access to the elevator controls that take us up to the upper deck. Looks very cool, very well detailed as well. I think that's a rotor that's been turned upside down and then reconnected, doing some nice rotor glitching. In here, we've got some monitors, we've got some screens as well as the main bedroom and a little sofa there that you can observe as you're traveling through different areas. And in here, of course, we have a bathroom. That's not really got too much privacy. To be honest, you see we've got the window here as you're having a bath or a shower that everyone could walk past, especially them space pirates. No one need them to catch you with your pants down in the shower. Anyway, let's head upstairs, use the elevator to nicely climb between these two floors. 
nicely warning marked as well so we don't get trapped between the two floors that would be a horrific scene I'm glad they disabled <laughs> ragdolly for things like that as we come into these two areas we've got another sofa so since this is a yacht it's more of a civilian type vessel and of course your wine and whatnot would be served to you as you're traveling through the stars or touring a different planet great for if you're a, a space engineer celebrity you could be aboard the ship and visit different colony outposts and as we come into this particular section, we've got another observation deck on either side, or just little offices for administration work, as well as these bedrooms that come with it. And right out of these bedrooms, we're straight into the main bridge. That reminds me very much of like a Serenity type bridge, a Firefly sort of ship bridge, where we've got the three seating areas, but we've also got all this curved armor. And of course, the captain can sit up on his seat, make the sort of right judgments. Let's test out the power of this ship, see what we've got here. So I'm looking for remote control access. So there we go, we've got control. And like I said, them nacelle thrusters are not actually wired up. So they're just acting as extra weight to drag us through the actual area. So let's check our acceleration. Quite slow, but it's not gonna matter too much. We are a civilian type vessel. We've got quite a nice turn, but it just, it feels like it handles like a spaceship this on the screen. I don't know if you can really notice that from watching it through the video. As we turn with the gyroscopes and maneuver ourselves, what it's all about anyway i'd like to thank you guys for watching definitely check out this ship on the workshop it's a really cool combination it's great for some inspiration if you fancy building a smaller ship into a larger one as well anyway thanks for watching and i will see you next time